Hello, this is David Farrell with another electronic music video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about another way to use Ableton Live's operator instrument for synthesis. In this video, we're going to be going in depth on subtractive synthesis. If you haven't watched the additive synthesis video, I would recommend you watch it. It does a good job of introducing some of the basics of operator that we'll be building on in this video. On the other hand, if you're already familiar with Operator, then you can jump right in here and learn about uh, some of the useful ways we can use another technique to generate sounds. So without any uh, more delay, let's get right into this video. So what do we mean when we use the term subtractive synthesis? This is another way of generating sounds using oscillators and some simple technology. Subtractive synthesis has been around for quite a long time. Uh, it used to be the default way that a lot of interesting sounds were made on hardware synthesizers, and we can replicate it very easily in software as well. What does it actually describe? Well, as you might guess, it's a little bit different from additive synthesis, and in some ways it's kind of the exact opposite of additive synthesis. Additive synthesis starts with sine waves, the simplest waveforms, pure tones, and adds them together to combine and create a more interesting, more complex sound. Subtractive synthesis goes in the opposite direction. Subtractive synthesis typically starts with a rich waveform. Rather than a pure tone like a sine wave, it starts with a, a sound that has a lot of upper harmonics and partials, something that's got a lot of different frequency components in it. Then we use filters to subtract different areas of frequency from our spectrum. The filters attenuate or make quieter different ranges of frequencies, and that lets us take away some of the sounds in our complex sound to create something a little bit more unique and interesting. We can use a lot of different types of filters to generate these sounds, and the next thing we'll need to talk about to describe subtractive synthesis is what these filters are. So I'm gonna move away from this page and I'm gonna to move towards operator so that we can look at the different filters inside of Ableton. Let's go there now. So I have opened up Ableton Live. I have put an operator instrument into one of my MIDI tracks, and I've also used the spectrum effect here. That's going to let us look at the harmonic spectrum of the sounds that we hear. To set up operator for subtractive synthesis, I'm going to do a couple quick house cleaning things. I'm going to turn off some of these other oscillators. In this example, I'm only going to use one waveform, and so I'm just going to only use my oscillator A. Using a sine wave, Sounds great, right? But there's not really rich, it's not really rich enough to, for filters to be effective. And so rather than using that sine wave, I'm going to go to the sawtooth wave. We can listen and see that sawtooth wave has so many overtones, so many spikes throughout what's going on over here. And so that's going to give us more opportunities to use filtering and subtractive synthesis effectively. Once I've got my waveform loaded up, I'm going to go to the filter section of Ableton Live. When I click on it the first time, the filter in my operator instrument, it's selecting the filter's envelope, which is how the filter changes over time. It's an interesting setting, but I'm going to move over to the actual filter here and go through a couple of the different types of filters that we have. The, D, the filter type is selected through this little pull-down window, and there's four primary types plus this bonus type. The first filter that's selected here is a low-pass filter. A low-pass filter allows low frequencies to pass through it. It attenuates or makes quieter high frequencies. I can set the frequency of my filter graphically here in the middle by moving this big yellow ball. I can also use this dial over here in the instrument, and on this dial I can also type in a frequency should I have a very particular setting. Once I do that, we can see and hear how different the sound is. We can see as we go higher, those high frequencies have been attenuated. We get a sort of muted, uh, quieter, more mellow sound when we use this high-pass filter. Another type of filter is the low-pass filter. Again, we can see it selected from the pull-down menu. It is the opposite of the high-pass filter. The, uh, it's the opposite of the low pass filter. The high pass filter allows high frequencies to pass through and low frequencies are attenuated. We can set the filter's frequency in the same ways and when we hear the frequency, uh, when we hear the sound pass through this filter, we'll get a different effect. Here, you can see that we've left those high buzzy frequencies. 
we've lost our fundamental on some of our low frequencies. And so we get a much more bright and aggressive sound when we use this high pass filter instead of the low pass filter. Both of those are our primary filters. We can combine them to create some different filters as well. The next two filters are achieved by combining the two, combining a high pass and a low pass filter that overlap or don't overlap in particular ways. This filter is a band pass filter. The band pass filter is created by combining a high pass filter, and that high fat pass filter would look like this. Right, you watch my mouse, it would sort of start here and arc off to the right, the, and a low pass filter that would start over here and go off to the left to our lower frequencies. The band pass filter allows a small band of frequencies to get through. We can see as we move it around that different ranges of the frequencies are accentuated. It combines some of the high and some of the low, but just gives us a tiny window of frequencies. Can be useful for interesting effects, to be sure. The last is the notch filter. The notch filter is similar to the band pass filter. It combines both a low pass filter and a high pass filter, but they don't overlap, which gives us this notch in the center. When we play it, we can see by looking at spectrum and by listening that there's a gap in our sound. There's something missing. There's a little, there's a little space in the overtone spectrum where the partials are attenuated, are made quieter, and that gives us another kind of interesting effect. The last filter here, for completeness sake, is what Ableton calls their morph filter, and it has this interesting morph setting here in the window that allows it to change between the different filter types. And so this is an Ableton sort of custom filter that they've built for you. Uh, if you see it in Ableton, you can mess around with it. It just switches between all these different filters. So when we're working with subtractive filter synthesis, these are the four filter types that we have. The high pass filter, the low pass filter, the notch filter, and the band pass filter. All of them remove some of the spectrum. All of them attenuate frequencies in a particular region, and that allows us to shape our sound in different and interesting ways. One thing each of these filters have in common is that they have a setting called the resonance. The resonance increases the amplitude of frequencies near the cutoff point. You can see as I drag the resonance knob up, the frequencies start to get louder right where my little yellow ball is, which is of course where the setting of my frequency cutoff is. Resonance is a feature that we have on all of our different filter types. You want to be careful if you turn it up too loud, you could hurt your ears and make something very loud, but it tends to bring a sort of pronounced effect to the filter there. When you do sweepy effects like that, having a high resonance can sometimes really uh, make things stand out. And so the resonance is a feature that all of your filters have. When you're setting your filters, you can mess with the resonance, see what sorts of uh, emphasis you like at that particular range of frequencies. But again, just be careful that you don't make something too loud or and uh, hurt your ears too much. While it isn't specific to subtractive synthesis, in this video I do want to introduce one other idea, and that's the use of the LFO, or Low Frequency Oscillator, in synthesis and operator. The LFO is an oscillator that produces very low frequencies, typically frequencies that are below our audible range. And it's different from the oscillators that show up over here. The oscillators that show up on the left side of an operator instrument are oscillators that we typically hear the frequencies of. The low frequency oscillator modulates the frequencies of the other oscillators. In other words, we don't hear the frequency of this oscillator, but we hear an effect that it has on other parameters in our synth. A one way we can use it is to modulate the, fr the pitch of our oscillator, and that's going to be the default setting for our LFO. Okay. Our LFO is set to a sine wave, and you can hear it shifting the frequency of our initial oscillator up and down. If we change the amount here, that affects the amplitude of our sine wave. And if we change the rate here, that affects the frequency of our sine wave.
So the LF bow is sort of a fun little thing that we can use. It can add some movement to what are often static sounds or some sort of dynamic things to these uh, static sounds. But we don't just have to use it in this capacity. When we look here, destination A, what, what Ableton is asking us is where do we want the LFO to go? And rather than sending it to my oscillator and creating those sort of goofy circusy sounds, I'm gonna click somewhere else. I'm gonna to click to the filter. And now what my LFO is doing is modulating the frequency of my low pass filter. And I can change the elements of this, change the rate, change the amount. And I can get some different effects, again, that give my sound a little bit more liveliness. We can use other wave shapes as well, sine waves, square waves, triangle waves, sawtooth waves in different places, or sample and hold, which is somewhat of a random setting. Here we get all these different random blips. Destination A shows all of the different oscillators and the filter at which you can, to which you can send your LFO's data. In destination B, if I click it, you can see that the operator is able to send your LFO to a whole bunch of different places as well. And so the LFO and operator is actually quite a powerful example of, the, of, of LFO usage in a synth. It can add a lot of things to your sounds through a very simple method. That's the end of this video. Today's video was about subtractive synthesis using Ableton Live's operator instrument. In this video, we talked about some of the basic ideas behind subtractive synthesis. We looked at the different types of filters available in operator, and of course, those filters are the common filters you're going to see in pretty much any electronic setup, the real common types of filters. And then we talked a little bit about the low frequency oscillator, something that we can use in our subtractive synthesis, but something we can really use in just about any type of synthesis. All new information for you to use today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, throw them to me. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.